Lifting Up Jesus, opening his word from Australia, Denmark, Israel, Japan, New Zealand, Northern Ireland, Republic of Ireland, Singapore, South Africa, United Kingdom, Thailand, the Philippines, United States, and throughout the world. You're watching Morial TV. Hi, this is Tim from Morial TV and Morial Radio, here with James Jacob Prash, live in Israel and Galilee. Jacob, one of the believers, had the question based on Acts 2, verse 38. Does baptism have to be only in the name of Jesus? Thank you for your question. When you see people making an issue out of baptism in the name of Jesus only, understand something. They are Sabellian heretics. The real issue is not baptism. The real issue is they do not believe in one God and three divine persons. I'm not fussed if somebody uses the term Trinity or not, or Triunity or not, but I am fussed if someone denies that it is one God and three eternally existing divine persons. The Father, Son, and Holy Spirit are three persons, but yet one God. We see this in the martyrdom of Stephen. The Holy Spirit is there in Stephen, we are told, but then he beholds Jesus at the right hand of the Father. There are three persons of the Trinity. It is not a trinity of manifestations. The Jesus only people say the Father is Jesus, Jesus is Jesus, and the Holy Spirit is Jesus. The ancient heresy of Sabellianism. It is a form of something known as modelism. We should not believe it. The issue with them is not baptism. Now let's look at the baptism aspect of this in the book of Acts. They try to argue their theology from Acts. Understand that the baptismal narratives or accounts in the book of Acts are descriptive, not proscriptive. Are descriptive, but not proscriptive. We base our doctrine first of all, on what is proscriptive, not on what is descriptive. The two are not necessarily, or are not contradictory, but we look first at what is proscriptive. In the Great Commission, Jesus said, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. That is proscriptive. Do it this way. In Acts, where you see in the name of Jesus, it is descriptive. They baptize them in the name of Jesus. Why? We have to understand something. Baptism was both a Jewish practice, a widespread Jewish practice. John the Baptist had already been baptizing people in preparation for the coming of Jesus. Yohanan HaMatbil, the Hebrew ritual of Tevilah. There are multiple baptisms in Judaism practiced this day even by Orthodox Jews, called mikvah or mikvah bris. The Jews always had baptism, okay? But they didn't have baptism in the name of Jesus. It was just in the name of God, okay? So, too, there were pagan versions of baptism practiced in the Greek world. What the Book of Acts is doing by emphasizing in the name of Jesus is not proscribing primarily, but describing. It is stating the name of Jesus in order to differentiate between Christian baptism and the baptisms that preceded it in Judaism and in some cases, as in Corinth, in the pagan world. But the formula, the instruction, the proscriptive is given in the Great Commission, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Now what I do is I say, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, by the authority of the Lord Jesus Christ and in his name, I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. It covers all the bases. 
But remember, when you see people making this big issue out of Acts, they're not understanding the system name of Acts. They're not understanding that what Acts was describing and emphasizing in the name of Jesus was to differentiate it between baptisms that existed, even baptisms that believers had undergone before becoming believers that were not in the name of Jesus within Judaism, within the ministry of John the Baptist, and so on. Secondly, they're not drawing the distinction between the proscriptive and the descriptive. But most importantly, understand the real issue with these people is not baptism. It is that they embrace the heresy of Sabellianism. They are modelist heretics who deny one God and three persons. They are anti-Trinitarian. That is the issue. Now again, the term Trinity was first used by Tertullian, Trinitas. I'm not fussed about the term. You don't have to say Trinity. You could say triunity. Or you can just say one God and three persons. But it is very clear from John's Gospel in the high priestly prayer of Jesus. Jesus not only confirms that there's one God and three persons, but he explains the dynamics and interoperation between them. Thank you so much for your question. My name is Jacob Prash. God bless. Dear friends, greetings in Jesus. This is your friend Jacob Prash speaking to you at the moment from the UK. You know, so many of the questions we get in our Roku broadcast and on our Vimeo clips and on YouTube deal with subjects that we deal with much more extensively in our books. We can't, for the sake of brevity, uh, go into the kind of depth in a TV broadcast we can actually go into in a book. But so many of the questions come from material that are expounded in the books on a much more broader scale that it's almost frustrating sometimes that we can't spend hours and hours answering a, a, the questions that, that are given to us. Obviously, practicality dictates that's not a possibility. The books are there. They're available. They're available in print through the Moriel catalog on the Moriel website, moriel.org. But... In this day of Kindle and electronic books, they're also available through Amazon, and they're available through Kindle. Kindle. The three books that would be the most referred to in the questions we receive are the three latest books. The first being The Dilemma of Laodicea. The Dilemma of Laodicea is an exposition of the seven churches in Revelation, culminating with the final two churches, Philadelphia and Laodicea particularly, setting the stage for the return of Jesus. The dilemma of Laodicea would be the first. The second would be Shadows of the Beast. Shadows of the Beast. How the coming Antichrist, how his identity will be revealed to the faithful church. The rapture will not happen, will not happen, absolutely not happen, until the faithful church knows who the ultimate beast of Revelation is. That is the Antichrist and also the false prophet. How the identity of the coming Antichrist will be revealed to the faithful church, Shadows of the Beast, the second book. And the final and latest one, Harpezo. Harpezo, what the scripture actually teaches about the rapture, the snatching away which takes place between the sixth and seventh seals in the book of Revelation. So these three books, The Blum of Laodicea, Shadows of the Beast, and Harpezo, all available on the Morial catalog, all available through Amazon, and all easily available electronically by Kendall. Thank you so much, dear friends. God bless. May Jesus be with you.